For centuries, mankind has engaged in warfare. Conflicts between people and nations have been played out on the battlefield. Men and women have fought with valor on behalf of king and country. Some would say that victories are achieved by utilizing the best strategies and tactics. Others might argue that superior weapons are crucial to winning any battle. The end result is the same. One side is the victor, the other becomes the victim. However waged, the art of war has been developed and refined for one purpose, to defeat the enemy. Welcome back to Bible Alive. We want to get right into it again, Pastor. Okay, now we left off where, where Samuel tells Saul, you must kill everyone, even the animals. That's Don't right. bring anything back. And so what you happens? Know, and maybe we ought to just say briefly that a lot of times we think, oh, why would God do such a thing? But a lot of us don't understand, people today don't understand the depths of wickedness in right. some of these nations and, their, and the, the leavening effect they would have had they been allowed to stay alive. You know, they'd passed the boundaries of their probation. God said, slay out of the young and old. So here comes Saul waltzing back from the battle, only he's bringing the king of the Amalekites with him, Agag, and a bunch of livestock. And he approaches Samuel, and Samuel says, Saul, what are you doing? And Saul says, hey, blessed are you of the Lord. We, we've performed what the Lord told us to do. And Samuel says, well, if you did what the Lord told you to do, why am I hearing all this livestock? Why do you have the king of the Amalekites right here? And of course, in regard to the livestock, Saul says, well, we saved the livestock because we're going to offer it up to God as a sacrifice. In other words, in other words making, doing a wrong and then saying you're going to do it for God, it becomes okay. That's right. That's so right. That's, that's what I call partial obedience. That's, that's making excuse to try to stand on the good side of God when really you didn't obey in the first place. But you're using some religious purpose yeah. to say, well, look at it, but I'm doing it for, for God. Therefore, it ought to be okay, no matter what I do. That's right. We have an epidemic of that today in, yep. in the Christian sure, world yeah. where, where it, well, in the, we see it in the dark ages where the church brought worldly things into the church and then stamped them with a sanction of, uh, for example, they brought a statue of Jupiter Olympus into the church and named it Peter. Yeah. And, and, and we're going to dedicate it to God so it makes it okay. And, you know, we have people doing the same thing today. We've got some churches that literally have become coffee shops, malls, everything else are bringing the world into the church. But as long as it's in the building right. and it's part of our service, we're going to offer it up to God is a sacrifice that makes it okay. And as long as we sing about God and we do all these things, somehow we think that makes us holy, but that's not, it's, that's you know, right. it's a missing fact, point when we do that. It's, it's a it, disobedience. It's disobedience. In fact, in, in this chapter on 15, um, <clears throat> verse 22, it says, Then Samuel said, Has a Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? And then I love this. I've got it underlined in my Bible. It says, Behold, to obey is better than to sacrifice. The bottom line is our job is to obey. And of course, Saul did when he was, when he was young. He was humble and he obeyed. Now it's partial obedience. And now, of course, you go on and God anoints King David. Of course, he's just a kid. You know, we, we talk about that he defeats Goliath. Well, then on, obey, on, on that obeying okay. is better than sacrifice. Something that comes to my mind okay. is we have a tendency in our hearts We'll concede in certain areas of our life. We'll obey God in some areas, but we have these pet sins. Yes. And, and we seem to think that, okay, for example, let's say that, that I have a problem carousing with women. Well, I'll put more in the offering plate. Yes. We think if we multiply some of the things we do, it'll cover up 
the areas where we're not being obedient. But that's I'll, not obedience at all. That's right. That's right. And Absolutely. that's what the Lord means. To obey is better. I want your heart. I yeah. want all your heart, he says. I don't want a few things here and there. And in fact, Jesus said in the New Testament, what did he say? He said, uh, um, you cannot, you either got to be all for me or you're all against me. It, it's right. not partial obedience. Right. And when we love, when we love the Lord so much, we'll, we'll surrender everything that we have. Everything will go out. Well, <clears throat> I want to make this point here. So now, of course, David kills Goliath right after this. Saul likes this guy because this guy is going to make him look even better. And then... In, but you in, remember during that time, Saul was on the battle. He was on the lines 40 days. He never went out and took the giant. Yeah. Initially, I don't think that got to him, but what you're going to say is well, yeah, later it, on it did. Well, and, that, and that's a point that I think is, it needs to be made to the, to the audience because it's so practical, and that is, is that Saul was fighting the battles for the Lord. They, they were winning battles. Israel was winning battles. He was certainly busy about the Lord's work. Busy about the Lord's work and winning, thinking that, look at, I mean, I'm the king of Israel. I'm the spiritual leader in a way. I mean, Samuel was the prophet, but I am the king of Israel. I'm fighting battles. I'm stressed out. I'm doing all these things, and they're all good things. Therefore, God must be blessing me because mm -hmm. we're winning the battles. Even with David and Goliath, when David killed Goliath, it, it was still the king of Israel, which was Saul. This says, we have won this battle. So now we go to chapter 18, and this, this is where I, I really want to hit it for all of us today. It says, in verse 6, now it happened, chapter 18, verse 6, it says, now it happened as they were coming home. In other words, David was now fighting battles with Saul. Mm -hmm. Now remember, David's new on the block. That's right. You know, he's still a young, young person, but, but now he is fighting battles and, and Saul is the king. He's been fighting all these battles, winning them. But here's what happens. Now, and, and Saul feels like it's winning glory to him. Yes, David's absolutely. one of his soldiers. One of his soldiers. And so he gets the glory until this happens. Now it happened as they were coming home, when David was returning from the slaughter of the Philistines, that the women had come out of all the cities of Israel. Not a few, but mm -hmm. all of them. And it's, it's interesting, Dwight, that it was the women. Yes. Because if there's one thing that gets to a man's pride, you know, it's one thing for a man to say it, boy, boy, for a woman to say something. I know. I mean, you, you get know, a the bunch man's of women trying say, to impress women. Yeah. And I can see Saul. What, and what they that, say to him? It says that the women came out of all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tambourines, with joy. And with musical instruments. So they didn't come out to meet King David. Or it wasn't King David. Right. They did not come out to meet David. Right. It says right here they came out to meet King Saul. That's right. But here's what they said. It says, so the women sang as they danced and said, Saul has slain his thousands, but David has tens of thousands. Mm -hmm. Now David's just a young upstart. Yeah. And, and, and he hasn't been fighting all these battles, but already he has slain his tens of thousands and Saul has thousands. And then it says, then Saul was very angry. And the saying displeased him. It says, they have ascribed to David tens of thousands, and to me, they have only ascribed thousands. Mm -hmm. Now what more can they have but my kingdom? Now he's jealous. He's full of pride. He's got jealous. And then it says, so from that day, it says, Saul, I, David, or uh, the direct translation is this, it says, so Saul viewed with suspicion David from that day forward. And, and the, the kicker is this. What made Saul from a humble man that was afraid, even though his head and shoulders above everybody else, he was a humble servant of the Lord to get him to that position. That, that's my question for the people. What can take you and I from, from finding Jesus Christ and then later on, if we're not careful, you know how many televangelists and how many pastors, and I know some that have fallen away from the Lord and they've been very successful. And the reason I believe is because they don't take time with God. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I, when, when I'm busy... I can, I can read my Bible, I can do all sorts of things, but if I don't take time to commune and surrender, even in the ministry, I get messed up because, I, because I'm in the flesh. I think the old saying says they became so busy about the work of the Lord, they forgot the Lord of the work. There you go. <clears throat> I need to remember that. Say that again one more time. They, they, they were so busy, and we can become so busy about the work of the Lord that we 